okay. Well, I don't know what that is. I think I I tied my mic around my neck so I don't accidentally jerk it out of the computer. Okay. Did you get the part about Mrs. Yellen will be speaking in four minutes? Yes, I hope so, because that kind of tells me where I left off, that you could hear. Okay, Mrs. Yellen is speaking at uh, 8.30, again at 12.25, and there is some revised uh, uh, numbers coming out at 8.30. 9 o'clock is another member of the Brain Trust, and at 10 o'clock, if you trade crude oil and or the Canadian dollar, you might want to pay attention because the Bank of Canada is announcing um, their uh, their bank rate. So that might be of interest. 10.30 is crude oil inventory. I put a sign on this chart, so we want to pay attention to that. Yesterday, I pointed out that uh, bonds had made a tremendous move. I mean, it was it went to the stratosphere. So, when you're asking yourself, you know, who cares? I don't trade bonds. What do I care about that? This is it appears to me to be a positioning prior to the. Um, possibility of an interest rate hike think about what what happens if they raise what happens to bonds if they raise the interest rates when the interest rates go up the price of bonds which is what we trade when we're trading bonds goes down so if you were a big moneyed fund manager what would you be doing and I know what I would be doing is moving a whole bunch of money into bonds with the idea that um, that they the the price of bonds would go down, and um, then you can short bonds from going down. So they're taking it up, and then they will take it down if and when that interest rate. Uh, hike gets announced and I think that uh, Mrs. Yellen is going to make some indication of that. She's real smart. Um, gold this morning is going down but when the price, the the indices, all these markets are interrelated is where I'm going with my story. So when you see uh, bonds that are going way, way up the indices will sell off as a rule and um, vice versa. So by monitoring what's going on with bonds, even if you don't trade them, it gives you an, an idea of what might be happening with indices, which I think most of us do trade. Before I get 375 questions about these little dotted lines that are on my um, this is the 8, 10, 5 minute uh, sharpshooter. This is a new indicator that will be coming out with the next um, the next toolkit update. And it, this this is a simple minded one, but this is um, a standard deviation channel, and it's it has a a one standard deviation and a two standard deviation. Don't get these mixed up with the deviation levels. They are entirely different. Um, but I turned the the one deviation markers off of this thing. I turned them to transparent because you people, I know that when this gets released, Daryl will do a training video on on how to use them. The people who like to do iron condors on um, with these spreads, and even I think uh, some some people like to do the butterflies with binaries. This is a really cool thing because 
on a, I don't put it on the diagnostic because the diagnostic bars have absolutely nothing to do with anything except volume and and pricing and it could take an hour for one bar to form and it could take a fraction of a second so it's irrelevant but when you have a time on here and these if if the bar hasn't done anything the next bar will form in five minutes if not before then you've you've got a nice range here and any market will rarely move beyond two standard deviations this is a mathematical calculation those of you who have taken a lot of math and higher math and statistics are probably uh, more familiar with it but what I think it's really neat for I mean I think it's going to be we'll have to take a look and see is when when we see these bars getting real close to the top of the two standard deviation or the bottom this is a dynamic indicator then this is a time where you might want to uh, tighten up your stops if it's up at the top and you're thinking about taking a long trade you might want to rethink that because typically it will bounce back down off of there and it stays between these channels so you can use this as a stop tightening and a confirmation for an entry and um, you also see when it's in chop it's going to be hanging around the center line in addition to having a bunch of yellow candles so I think that's a very cool thing and I'm anxious to test that out I put it on my um, the uh, sharpshooter that I have on TF and one on gold too so we can kind of monitor that as we go along so this morning on crude oil it did take a it got a good blast of block orders to the sell side we are trading below settlement uh, below the red ice the commodities seem all to be going down as well as the currencies another interesting um, thing to pay attention to the um, dollar and the euro are getting very close to parity the dollars trading uh, 100 and about a quarter 100 point to went to point two seven and the euro is trading at uh, 1058 so when those they're real close to coming together in price there we'll see what uh, happens but I would pay attention to that also um, yes I have a question here from um, Jeff that's asking me why uh, crude oil is my favorite instrument um, I guess I just have a personal uh, interest in crude oil I've watched it for a very long time and I I was always afraid to trade it because I bought into the um, the theory that the only people that traded crude oil futures contracts were lunatics so I guess you know what that makes me but anyway um, now that I've learned how to trade it and and I have I had never traded it before uh, apex I um, now I'm not afraid of it and it's very well behaved if you understand the apex indicators how these people uh, without these indicators trade crude oil is absolutely beyond my comprehension I mean I truly believe they are lunatics and to leave contracts on uh, you know for overnight and weeks and oh my goodness that's insane but you can certainly make some decent money by using the apex con uh, indicators and crude oil generally moves it's very difficult to trade something that does not move um, you're gonna get chewed up and spit out 
the bus driver is not going to be very kind to you. So it's my preferred market. I just really like it. It behaves very well. It moves. It will offer you at least two or three nice trades a day, generally. Every once in a while, it puts up a day where, you know, they just, they got some substitute bus driver and the guy was insane. So I just don't get on his bus. That's the end of him. And, oh, and we have the VIX that dropped below 15 uh, yesterday at the close. So I will come back at noon and uh, we'll kind of see what the morning has brought. Be very careful of 1030 because the um, API is reporting the expectation is quite a bit higher in these inventories than they had expected. But uh, who knows what will happen. So we'll see. Anyway, I will come back at noon. This has been my view from my world in Apex land, brought to you by Apex Investing. Thanks. <laughs>